Peace, y'all, and welcome to Chug Talk, your favorite payday show. It's good to see y'all again. I hope them uh, checks have rolled in uh, and nobody's having trouble with them direct deposits. As you can see, um, last week I was by myself uh, on a solo mission, but today, uh, back like he never left, uh, the, the brother man, uh, brother Eric, Eric J -J 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 Jackson. Peace, y'all. Yeah, so peace. Uh, that's all he got to say to y'all for the day. Um, but um, well, I'll say this. I'll say this. We can have this edited out. Let me later. Um, I appreciate uh, brother Lee holding it down. I had to uh, prioritize family, uh, but looking forward to you know, like brother Lee said, like I never left because I did, especially with them uh, that Joker. The, now my. Speaking of which, let's move forward. So um, no, all, all real in the show. It's good to see y'all, and I hope y'all happy to see us. Um, so today our topic is uh, Soil to Wealth. We're talking about how to build wealth using land um, inside of the black community. So we'll talk about that today. But of course, before we jump into that, we got to do our joke of the day. Generally, folks who uh, are excited about Lee doing the joke of the day, turn your heads, close your ears, whatever you need to do. It's not going to be one of them. But uh, Brother Eric is going to uh, shoot his shot. So let's just let's just give him space for that. Well, we'll see. I mean, I think it might be the best joke we had on the show, uh, being that it's episode 10. Um, so okay. it's, it's simple. How do you make the most out of a hot dog experience? Are you asking me? <laughs> oh, I'm asking the people, but I want to hear from you too. Oh, if I had to make the most out of a hot dog experience, I, I would put it between some buns and <laughs> go for it. No, that's the God on I'm serious, too. I'm not joking. That's the God on the street. <laughs> that actually should be my answer. I'm thinking about cookouts and Oh, yeah. Uh, I put it between some buns. All right. Well, actually, how you do it is that you got to relish the moment. Like like, like relish? relish. <laughs> like pickles? Oh, okay, man. Okay, so if you, you, you got to relish the moment, <clears throat> you must have just thought that up. <laughs> Alright. Must it just not <coughs> must it just Right. Okay. You all don't use condiments. There's no big deal. Um so let's move forward. Oh, but, we uh, had a joke about condiments. We How did you have practice condiment say we condiments. Oh it was. Anyway. That's okay. that's for the cool. loyal fans though. That's for the yeah. loyal fans. Um but yeah, uh yeah, so we're here to talk about soil to wealth. Talk about how do we use uh how do we use how do we build wealth in uh with black land and black communities. So uh before of course we jump into our bell questions. Before we jump into our bell questions, um, we're going to talk a little bit about it first and really just give our perspectives and, and share our thoughts on it, just in general, the topic, and then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll dive forward. Well, I've been waiting two paydays to get here. Can I stop? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You owe us some lunch, too, but go ahead. No, it was their payday, not mine. Oh. I got paid on the off weeks. This, all right. So, no, nah, man, what I would say, seriously, for, for those who are listening, I think that uh, one thing when we talk about building black black wealth using land, we have to uh, situate it in the larger context of our uh, political economic system, right? Capitalism necessitates poverty. We know that, mm -hmm. right? Everybody knows absolutely. that in order for there to have to be an, an upper class, you actually absolutely have to have the lower class and the different derivatives of the lower class, working class, working poor, mm -hmm. poor, low mm -hmm. income, whatever language we want to use. But I think that this topic is very timely because when we talk about economic development, sometimes, I mean, when I'm listening to uh, um, some of the artists these days, people talk about purchasing land, right? right? One of the things when you talk about the formula of building wealth in this country, if the conversation is not about land, then we messed up. In fact, uh, Bob and Malcolm X said that all revolution and independence is based on land. Right? Like, in the context of capitalism, it might be different in different political economic systems. Uh, means of production, property, mm -hmm. land, are three things that you absolutely have to have to build wealth. And there's a difference between income and wealth. Mm -hmm. Income is about what you there bring you in. Wealth is about assets and what you have that, that uh, have well, an I'll accrual value um, that appreciates over time. And so with that being said, I just want to lift that up. So as we, I'm, I'm really grateful for the uh, the director of this show for coming up with the topic because yeah. I think it's important. Like it's almost Impact. a misnomer to say that like you got, and and just for those who don't know, Brother Lee comes up with, with you know, what we're talking about. So if you don't like it, great. If you do, 
uh, great. But um, but in all seriousness, talking about black wealth and talking about land is essentially talking about um, water and ice, right? Because it's yeah. the same thing, exactly. right? You, it's not. Exactly. It has to be a part of exactly. the conversation. So that's all. I'll leave it there. So uh, real quick, uh, so. One, I agree with you as your perspective on it with, uh, in this relationship with capitalism, but also I think on the back end of that, you said something at the very end just now, and you said um, you said pretty much they're like water and ice, you know what I mean? They they pretty much are the same thing or go together, and I guess I, that's that needs to be, I, I would like to emphasize on it a little bit more, just just being clear that when you talk about wealth, you talk about uh, black land, right? You, I think it's important to know the relationship that you had with it today and differentiate that from the relationship that our ancestors had with it. Yeah. To know that in 1910 that there were over 14 million acres of, uh, of land owned by black folks. Um, How many 14? 14 million, Not I'm talking, 14, I'm talking uh, M, 14 million acres of land owned by black folks um, in the U.S. in 1910, which was essentially the, uh, the era of, uh, of a black land ownership powerhouse, if you will. Yeah. Um, but to know that, well, one, raise the idea or raise the uh, suspicion of why land, right? You know what I mean? Because they could have owned a bunch of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. something else, you know what I mean? Whatever resources back then. But uh, land was obviously, for 14 million people, I'm sorry, for, for all of these folks that have 14 million acres, it, it's obviously uh, a major resource. And I think it's we owe it to them to ask why, and we owe it to them to, to kind of make our way backwards and, and start to really give the understanding of like, What's important about it? Yeah. You know what I mean? What can you do with it and, 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 and how can it be passed on and just everything that flows around land? And I've said it before and I've said it uh, in conversations, I've said it in these episodes, but uh, land is the biggest resources we got. Everything you, uh, you know what I mean? Wherever you're at right now, just look down. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And it's realistic. Like you're on land and, and somebody owns that. And that's why I think the ownership piece should be should be highlighted, especially when we're talking about black ownership. It's, the, it's, it's our only way to control the things that are happening. Right then and there, so that's strong. I would add to that. Can I just say this that like to that very point about if you look down, you're on land. So mm-hmm. if we're talking that's about real. movement for Black Lives, mm-hmm. or we're talking about specifically police brutality, mm-hmm. if we're talking about exactly. poverty, education, exactly, it all bro. happens on the land and should be connected yeah. to land issues. That's all. I'm saying. Yeah, and this, before we jump into the bell question, the last thing I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna simplify it just a little bit. But when you think about land, think about your front yard, right? Think about your neighborhoods. Because yeah. I remember growing up in my neighborhood. The land was pretty much we we all were clear about that what was ours and what we yeah, had yeah, yeah. you know what, what I mean what line, side, exactly right, right you couldn't park in front of somebody's land so we understand that diff- uh, that same way and you take that sense of ownership with that perspective of ownership move it over to a larger scale understanding like I said back then in 1910 what they were doing with 14 million acres and how they were governed and how they used it you know what I mean what they did to share it or barter or whatever the case may be I think it's the same thing because I, I watch folks in our community do that with front yard gardens I watched them do it with uh, with yeah. small lots. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's it's a lot of the same things, different scale. Um, but I think the relationship should, should start to be um, revived, if you will, around that. So. And can I just, my very last thing before mm-hmm. we get into bell questions is to put a cap on what you talked about, right? Mm-hmm. So you're talking about 14 million, mm-hmm. which was uh, something about around like 14% of the land yeah. that was owned by black people in 1910. So that's 1910, y'all. A hundred years <laughs> later. And uh, I think it was uh, 2016, there was a study, don't quote me on the date, but a study came out from the uh, United States Department of Agriculture mm-hmm. and said that about 1% mm-hmm. of all land is owned that. by black people. Yeah. So you're talking about, if you ask what is one of the biggest thefts, mm-hmm. or the biggest materials that are, that are uh, stolen from people, in the history of the, the country, of this country, the United States of America, mm-hmm. it will be land. If you right. ask what is the biggest theft to black people, according to brother uh, Michael P. Scott, is the theft of black land. That's the biggest. That's, That's the spell. biggest in the 20th century. And now we're uh, dealing with the uh, the unfortunate inheritance of that type of oppression. No, that's a real spell. That's a real spell. I appreciate you capping that up. Um, for the sake of time, uh, we can talk about this all day. This is another one of those topics, but we're going to dive into the uh, dive into the bell question. Yeah, yeah. So um, our first bell question is from Cherie. Um, so Cherie says, "Where does black wealth and land intersect, and what's important about the con- what's important about the- what's the importance of the combination?" So we just kind of talked about that a yeah. little bit. Um, I guess the only thing I would I would add to you is that with the black wealth and land piece intersects is. Uh, just knowing like how black folks were surviving. We talked about the land ownership, right? But we didn't talk about 
um, the the how how in what ways that land was used to to big to build capital to yeah. uh, to make resources to provide uh, protection and safety and support you know I mean? freedom. As, you know what freedom. I mean? So like you realistically, you know what I mean. We think land, we might get limited and think, uh, what can we grow, right? We might get right. limited and think, um, what can we build on it, right? Yeah. But those spaces of land, man, were, were essential in those times. So when you talk about where, they, where do they intersect, I think they have intersected multiple times, and I think they'll continue to intersect. I think it's up to us to capitalize on those intersections, though, understanding what can we do with it at a time. Because understanding, and this is the last piece I'll say, but understanding that's going to, times continually are evolving. Uh, and what you can do with land now is not even close to what you could do with land back then, especially for black folks in, in, in this country. So um, I'll add that piece, but yeah. Can I just give a little bit of historical uh, kind of uh, reference to how we've used land and how we continue Absolutely. to use land? Of Absolutely. course, Brother Lee talked about growing Whole food, community. but then you also talking about building housing and specifically developments, right? Mm-hmm. But then you have factories and warehousing. Mm-hmm. You have the possibility in our space to do aquaculture projects. Um, you have the possibility for starting a school, right? And that's the other thing too, we gotta shift wealth to not just look at economic wealth, but there are other things that um, yeah, we actually yeah. talked about this this week. Um, the most important thing in relationships that we can have are relationships with people. People people give you money. People spend sure. at your, in your uh, enterprise. Um, people buy, right? So it's the relationships. And so if we can build strong people mm-hmm. by actually on black land, Building black schools, right, right, right. That teach our right. young people how right. to engage in the world that we that we've been that we've been uh, given. So, with that being said, man, I think that when you talk about wealth and land, I mean, we talked about it. Go hand yeah. in hand. Yeah, you know I mean? absolutely. Hand. I don't think it's no doubt about it. Um, I'm gonna jump to the next bell question. So, um, if there are no obstacles, and this is from Jared, okay. It was, uh, I don't know if that's that jar. So okay, yeah, we'll that, see what that jar should not be around. Um, if there are no obstacles <laughs> to attaining land, um, how could how could we use it to amplify our economics in our communities? Okay, and just for clarity, I think I think what they, I think what uh, Jared is trying to ask is, if money is not an obstacle, if permission is not an obstacle, if there is nothing between us and attaining the land that we want. How do we have it? If we have it tomorrow, how do we use it? Yeah, how we use Hope it to build right, like local economy. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, so, I mean, we talked about it, right? Yeah. I mean, or at least that's how I ended exactly. up. Exactly, no, that's talking about building. Just talking about the, it, yeah. the, the, the nutshell for me mm-hmm. is that you uh, build institutions, mm-hmm. right? So, like, on the land, you make the land productive. Right. But you want to have mm-hmm. a uh, generative relationship with the land, not that we're depleting, right? So, if you're putting things in the land that's constantly not only like it's making value to your uh, to your business, but it's like messing up the environment, mm-hmm. then we're not doing a good job there, but we're having a holistic generative relationship with right. the land that allows us to make the land continue to be productive, but also to have good relationship with the land. So Absolutely. that we have so that's what spiritual yeah, practices yeah, and all those things that we need, and even rest periods, mm-hmm. right? The way we let the land do its thing, exactly. that's in growing or what have you. But those are, I think, in a nutshell, what I would say. And and if I saw if there were no barriers, mm-hmm, no barriers, particularly in communities and black communities, one we would own our land. If there was no barrier, we would own it, and then we would have these confederate, like a confederation of communities that essentially, let's say, community A, community B, and uh, Little Africa Township are working in a collective okay. where community A grew um, uh, acorns mm-hmm. or trees or whatever. Where and B would uh, grow wheat, and then Little Africa Township would um, have a bakery, so that you make acorn, you know, yeah. acorn bread, right. and you have an industry that right. you're working. So, like, if there were no barriers, I think that essentially communities would be like colonies, but mm-hmm. instead of it being owned by a political power, it would be owned by the people and by the people in that confederacy. Yeah, so, no, I dig that. I dig that. I think uh, so. You talked a lot about what we could do with the land. You talked a lot about wh- how we use as black units to how we use uh, how we how we are using land uh, as a resource in our institution. I think the only thing I'll add to, you or or even uh, piggyback off of what you were talking about, is I think. Uh, if there are no obstacles tomorrow, tomorrow we can walk out and put our hand on the land we want and just own that. I think uh, I think our energy would then be directed into uh, teaching folks how to treat the land, how to be in relationship with the land, and you know what I mean, really giving them uh, not uh, I would say agriculture educa- education, but also political education. Mm-hmm. Like, what does land do? You know what I mean? How how does it sit in here? You talk about how do we build with it, right? How do we amplify our communities with it? I think it's important when you, uh, when you talk about amplifying. I think it's important to one. 
understand how to share the land, right? And you talked about folks being able to spread out and actually uh, create their own kind of economic powerhouses or, or economic power uh, spots, if you will, growing different uh, different different kinds of foods and different kinds of um, things that I guess would contribute to, to contribute to the community. But overall, uh, I guess I would say when you think about land um, and you think about amplifying economies, I think it's to think about whose name is on that land um, and whose name is going to remain on that land. Um, it's one thing to build on the land. It's one thing to uh, capitalize on opportunity, right? But it won't mean anything if it's not here in the next 20 years. It won't mean anything if it's yeah, not here in the next real. 40 years. So when you talk about that's actually true. giving folks that relationship and giving folks that way of how to treat it, how to respect it, that's all. That That's going to be on us. And if it doesn't work out, I think that will be on us too. Yeah, so, right. yeah. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to jump to the next bell. Good one. Um, last one. What has been... Uh, what? Oh, why has land been such a barrier for black folks uh, to own? And what does a reversal process look like? Thank you, the Tremo? Thank you, Tremo. Thank you, Tremo. That's right. I got uh, So I would say it like this because I know we don't have a lot of time, but I would say that it's a barrier because land is a necessity. Mm. There, God ain't making no more land. Uh, the uh, Orishas not making no more land. Like that's not that's not happening, right? So, because it's not happening, um, it, it's important. It's a political tool, and because Absolutely. it's a political tool, um, and it's one of those things that I talked about that you need to build wealth in, in a capitalist system. Um, and it's the one thing you need to just be a human being. There mm -hmm. is no culture. There's no people. There's no life without land. Um, and because of political dynamics. Yeah. And because it's a necessity and it, and it helps you be a human, black people at the bottom of the totem pole in the social political spheres of our lives, mm -hmm. we don't own it because we're not supposed to. If we do, then exactly. we have power. Exactly. And if we have power, then we get to, uh, as Solange said, have a seat at the table. They don't want us at the table. In fact, one we, artist depicted that they want the table to be on our backs. We have power to be so, our table. Be honest with you. But, um, but yeah. it is our table. And I'll, I'll, I'll add to... Uh, so when you talk about a barrier, I think it's simple. I think it's, um, why has there been such a barrier? I think uh, folks know, I think non-colored uh, folks know how important it is to own land. And I think colored folks uh, don't necessarily have that same uh, education, if you will, or that same uh, enlightening. But also on top of that, while non-colored folks know uh, how important it is to own it, they've also put several barriers. Uh, you're talking about laws, you're talking about um, you're talking about um, things attached to your image. You're talking about things attached to your uh, social groups, your organizations, um, where you come from. Um, you know what I mean? You think about, you can't just come in this country and on land. And when you talk about setting those barriers up that look legal and uh, actually tell you why. And then on the other side of that, we also being told growing up in our communities, it's not a thing to own. It's not a thing to have, uh, or, you know, and we don't see a lot of it. So when you have that, uh, we have that image here, I don't think it's a question of, um, where does the barrier come from? I think it's a question of how do we move it out of the way, to be honest with you. Right. I think it's evident of what it is. It's not, it's not, we're not, we're not decoding anything here. And can I just say the, the second part of that question was what the reversal process yeah, is like. Exactly. There is no reversal. Exactly. Um, we got to build power. Mm, we got to, right as, as Fela Kuti said, we got to be like water. Yeah. Water get no enemy. If we, if we, if we stand firm in that reality, yeah. then there won't be no reversal process. Nobody's just gonna give us anything. Right. We gotta organize, organize, organize. Like Kwame Ture said. No, that's love, man. That's love. I, I agree. Um, yeah, man. I appreciate y'all. It's, it's, it's been a good one. I'm actually feeling still a little uh, riled up. We can talk about this a little bit more. Like I got more to say. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Thank y'all again, though, for tuning in. Um, I know y'all cashing them checks. Um, and spending them bucks right now. Uh, you'll see us on your next payday. Um, I uh, hope all of you all get paid. Please continue to send questions. Um, and I'll, send the lunch, right? We, so we still haven't gotten lunch. I don't know if they're going to send lunch. I don't think they're going to send lunch. But our, uh, our next episode um, is going to be on September 18th. Um, it's going to be on accountability uh, and governance in communities, also black infrastructure and movements in black communities. Two. So you know both of those have been their own episode, but this time we're going to do a sequel and time together. So I hope you all ready to tune in. Um, find us at Black Yield on Instagram. Find us at Black Yield on Instagram. Um, Twitter, also Black Yield Institute on uh, Facebook and Chug and uh, on Instagram and Twitter as well. Peace. Peace. Chug definitely on Twitter.